Good evening. What's going on there, guys? Um, it is the Earthmaster here on this Monday night, March 27th, 2023. It's about 10.04 p.m. here in the West Coast. On the West Coast here, we got more rain coming in uh, a little bit later tonight and the next couple days. So a lot of snow, a lot of rain in the forecast out here for California once again. Latest earthquake activity here on the globe shows a 2.5 over here into the Turkey area, it looks like. Latest earthquake on the globe. Also some uptick around the Solomon Islands and uh, the Philippines ramping up again across the area. Let's go ahead and check out the latest movement here from the USGS. We did see this 6.1 come into the Solomon Islands about 86 kilometers deep. This was our seismically, well, seismic gap zone, so to speak, of quiet activity over the last couple days. So it's starting to fill in a little bit. Uh, but I see what that's doing. It's adding further pressure here to the west. We're already noting a big swarm of earthquake activity here across the Indonesia and the Philippines area as listed up here on the map. But it seems as though things are uh, gaining strength in this area. We did have a 5.0 coming in here within the last hour. This uh, just to the north of the Banda Sea, the Maluka Sea area. Uh, looks, yeah, 75 kilometers deep for that 5.0. So increasing movement uh, over here in this area of the world and the plate boundary. Not so much here along the Java Trench northward. We're still kind of watching this area for some uh, potential larger scale movement. It just hasn't really pushed over uh, that far yet, but eventually it will. Uh, into the uh, Mariana Islands, we did see an earthquake this morning of 4.8. This one pretty deep, 136 kilometers deep just outside of Guan. Guam, excuse me, uh, into the Mariana Trench. So we do need to watch this area upstream uh, for some shallower earthquake activity. Remember, the deeper movement quakes do trigger uh, a lot of times activity upstream. So we'll, we'll watch it overnight. It's not immediate. A lot of times it is. Sometimes we'll see it within an hour. Sometimes it's 12 to 24 hours uh, before we see that upstream activity. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. Fiji area, 4.2. I believe that one's a, uh, let me see what we got here. 4.2, obviously pretty deep. This one coming in earlier, late afternoon time period, 404 kilometers deep. Uh, so that puts the latest earthquake here on the map uh, around the Vanuatu area, 10 kilometers deep. Very, pretty shallow for that 4.7. Nothing showing up here across the Kermadec Trench or the New Zealand area, as noted on the uh, the globe here. Let me double check here with the... Uh, um, not for sure what's going on with that. That's a little weird. Uh, Geonet servers. <clears throat> Real quick. And all magnitudes. couple ones and some twos out here. 2.9 South Island right there. It looks like about uh, two hours ago. Not seeing any major uptick here as noted on the map, uh, which is good news for now. But uh, don't let your guard down because that is somewhat quiet down there. Normally, uh, quiet activity definitely turns over to active uh, activity. On the map here, the seismograph drums, not a whole lot of activity today. Uh, earlier, way earlier this morning, late last night. Yes, a couple threes. Uh, but overall, seismic activity today has been definitely very quiet across the New Zealand and the Kermadec Trench area. Uh, of course, you've got to remember, adjustment downstream here into the Tonga Trench should affect areas upstream as far as pressure uh, building. But if not, we watch that momentum kind of build its way towards the west up around these plate boundaries. And that's exactly what's been going on today. But... Uh, with that continued movement over here, continue to watch these areas upstream and uh, the uh, Kermadec Trench southward uh, for some adjustment. Got to move around the jigsaw puzzle. It's all it's all part of the puzzle, right? So to speak. Um, let's see what we got here across Alaska. 3.5. This one's 16 kilometers deep. Another 3.0. The Fox River area of Alaska. Not really seeing any too, uh, too much uptick here. A little swarm outside of this... Um, well, near Pyramid Peak, the uh, Alaska area, Dutch Harbor. Getting in on a little swarm out here. Mostly small microquakes. Um, so just kind of watch that. There is numerous volcanoes out here. Um, not for sure how to say that, so I'm going to leave that as is. But that volcano is very close nearby. Uh, and I'm sure a couple other non-monitored ones in the vicinity. Uh, either way, a little bit of swarming kicking up there. 
And over here around the Tanaga and the Takawanga volcano, still seeing some activity, although there's a newer earthquake here um, with this volcano. This one coming in, uh, looks like this morning sometime, about 7 o'clock for a point seven. Uh, may want to watch a couple of these. Uh, when we see all these start showing some activity, obviously that's uh, putting on some um, pressure down below into the subduction zone here of the Aleutian Trench. A little bit of swarming outside of the, um, what is this, um, Trident Volcano area once again. Right smack dab within that region. That's been swarming as well over the past few months. Nothing uh, kicking off yet, but eventually it's just a matter of time before we see another active, uh, super active volcano up here. Cook Inlet area. Um, and the rest of Alaska looks, uh, well, looks fairly typical up there. No major movement across the Pacific Northwest. We are still seeing some activity here along the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, looks like a 2.5, the latest here outside of Willits. That is on the Makama Fault Zone, which, which is the uh, coastal fault zone here, uh, just off of the plate boundary on the North American side. Uh, but more specifically, this activity up here is what I'm kind of watching. Uh, 1.4, 24 kilometers deep there into the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, that's uh, an area to watch, obviously, for some large-scale movement. We did have some activity there earlier. Um, let's see here. Is that a newer quake? Yeah, that's a little bit newer quake there. 19 kilometers deep for a 3.3. So some newer activity taking place here on the southern end. How much you want to bet that we have uh, some trimmer activity tonight in that region? I'll be surprised if we... <laughs> Goodness, all right. I'll just eat my words real quick. Uh, zero epicenters. I find that kind of hard to believe. Uh, maybe it's possible. Maybe they haven't got it up there yet, but, uh, goodness. All right. Zero epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia for now. Uh, the rest of California down South get some movement also on the Calaveras fault zone and the creeping segment here of the plate boundary. Not really seeing anything major taken off here in Southern Cal as of late, uh, in the 2.5 map here. Doesn't really show too much activity. Uh, the latest 2.5 up here on the Maca uh, Makama Fault, as mentioned. One here on the North American side of the plate boundary off the San Andreas Fault from early. Way earlier this morning, 2 o'clock. So things uh, a little on the quiet side for the West Coast area. North American plate as well. Uh, inland. Not seeing a whole lot of activity across the Yellowstone region uh, either. So let's see what we have here across the Yellowstone area. Looks like uh, not a whole lot here showing up, folks. Looks fairly quiet. A couple, er, couple smaller quakes there earlier this morning, but nothing really to write home about. All right, moving on. Um, the Puerto Rico area down here into the Puerto Rico Trench. Got one earthquake here coming in. A 3.38 kilometers deep and some other quake activity uh, across the region. Let's see what we got here on the map. Uh, looks like a 4.0 coming in now into the Middle America Trench, not noted over here. This is uh, from earlier this morning, a couple fours here into that area off the coast of Guatemala and the San Salvador region, El Salvador area. There's some deeper movement here into the trench area, so that will kick up stress upstream. Looks like that's starting to take place here with a 4.0 coming in just literally um, within about 30 minutes or so into the middle America trench upstream from those deeper quakes uh, at seven kilometers deep. So we'll watch that area here for some potential further movement. Uh, South America, one lonesome earthquake out here, 4.0 from this morning. Is that it? I doubt it. Uh, pretty close though. <laughs> Looks like a 2.7, a little bit further downstream onto the uh, Prucelli trench with that 2.7 and some uh, earthquake activity off the coast here with that 4.7 near the West Chile Rise. All right, uh, let's see what else do we have here. The big island of Hawaii, not a whole lot blasting off here yet. Um, not really seeing it, anything unusual. Of course, the Loihi Sea Mountain was showing some activity here over the last couple days, as noted on the map. I think we had about three or four earthquakes in this vicinity down there, about eight to nine kilometers deep. Uh, although last 24 hours don't show too much activity here in that area. Uh, again, up around the northern Java, uh, northern portion of the Java Trench, up through the Nepal area, Myanmar region, Middle East, all pretty quiet uh, for now. 
with continued movement uh, around the Turkey area. Although this region looks fairly quiet. This is the last 24 hours. That all actually looks fairly quiet. We should be seeing something. Uh, looks like we may be picking things up right now with a 1.8 into, let's see where this is at, Switzerland area. Six kilometers deep coming in just a short time ago. All right, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Nothing uh, really showing up here across the globe. You know, and who knows? There, there's probably earthquake activity taking place up here in areas that we don't really know about. Uh, for example, up around Antarctica. Um, you know, you can't really... I don't think they have every single place on Earth marked with a seismograph. It's just not possible. Uh, so there's, I'm sure, earthquake activity in certain areas that are not being reported um, just due to the uh, lack of equipment. But uh, this is what is being reported here today. And a couple regions to watch, as I mentioned here, backstream along the Kermadec Trench, New Zealand area, uh, but also that westward pressure momentum could uh, go up here around the northern end of Sumatra, uh, up around the Myanmar area, so we'll watch that. It's been relatively quiet in terms of large-scale movement. And nothing going on across the Japan Trench or the Kuril Kamachaka Trench, so that's, that's just a ticking... Um, an area to watch far as some larger scale movement. It, eventually it's going to happen. All right. Uh, let's see what we got here. Space weather activity here from the solar ham site. Let's see what we got entering. <laughs> never fails right around that time frame again, right? Getting that blackout of data noted here on the globe or on the uh, map as well, the graph. All right. So we do have coronal hole number 88 that is in position center disc of the earth sun plane. That could amplify conditions. Look at this prominence feature right here as well. Beautiful area uh, that sometimes does uh, pose a threat. They blast off the, the uh, sun there on occasion. But uh, what a beauty just looking at these uh, regional sunspots and prominence, uh, prominences and all the uh, other activity occurring there on the sun. Uh, doesn't look like there's been any adjustment yet for the uh, three-day geomagnetic forecast from that coronal hole, but we'll continue to watch and check back on that. Current data here of the solar flare activity. Um, yeah, there's just not a lot here, folks. Um, we did have some small sea flare activity from around this region here, and this is about the only area uh, to watch in terms of any type of uh, flaring some very low grade sea flares at best. Look at that. Barely. Talking about a C2.7, it looks like. C3.6. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's been fairly quiet for solar flare activity. 85% chance for a C flare. M flare at 10. X flare around 1% or less. Proton event, not likely. Um, and that uh, is about it for the space weather activity. Uh, the weather forecast out here for the West Coast, we'll give a quick glance here at the Western U.S. and we'll check out the GFS model. Here's our next storm coming in here, knocking on the door, bringing in a bunch of snow again. <laughs> keep saying that, but it keeps happening. Uh, and a lot of rain here for the Sacramento Valley. I think we're expected to get around an inch and a half um, onto, uh, uh, from this storm system. Could be locally higher in some areas of the valley. Of course, along the coast range, they get the most of it with uh, quite a few inches there of rain. Either way, this is going to spin off a little bit uh, off the central California coast before it just gets demolished. Uh, not for sure what disintegrated it like that, but it uh, just doesn't look like it's favorable for any significant precipitation down there in Southern Cal. Uh, and then a little break here over the next couple days after the storm system before uh, potentially another um, storm door opens up here into the uh, second week of April. But notice over here, folks, off into the central plains there. We're getting a, um, a good setup of severe weather potential, it seems like, every few days. So, got to watch that. It just seems to be uh, one of those years where it could be a very active season for tornadoes and severe weather out there in the, uh, in the plains. Still looking at day four and day five potential here. 15% chance of severe weather uh, stretching up to about southern Kansas down into the northern Texas area for day four. That's going to be on uh, Thursday, day five. The risk shifts eastward and uh, broadens up quite a bit here with a 30% chance of severe weather across a large portion of population here across areas 
of the Midwest region. So continue to watch that uh, as the days get closer. Uh, again, this is all subject to change, right? But it's kind of agreeing with each other. Each model run is uh, kind of agreeing with one another, uh, putting out a uh, severe weather day on Thursday and Friday of this week. So be on guard. Alrighty, guys, I'm out of here. Hopefully I can sleep good tonight. Uh, got some rain coming in. I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, sleeping in the rain, not even joking. So I'm hoping to get a good night of sleep. Yes. Have a good one. Catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow. Peace out.